What's going on guys? It's Ronan from the Green Mountain Rangers. Uh, we're here again to give you another video you've been asking a lot about. This is going to be our machine gun theory video. Uh, this is kind of a discussion we're going to get into some of our support weapon systems that we've used in the past. Um, some reasons why we ran certain guns that we did and uh, when we employ them in certain situations now. It's a, uh, a complex topic that you really have to kind of approach from a certain perspective. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it. So um, we're going to get into it, kind of give you some of the tricks of the trade, so that hopefully you can understand this type of very complex weapon system. So a lot of people wonder when is a good time to use a saw and where you should place it in your team. Um, there's a couple of misconceptions if you have to break through when you're thinking about a saw. Um, a lot of people look at a support weapon that you're going to use as, uh, you're going to give to someone in your squad, uh, they're going to be slower, they're kind of be on like a base defense type mentality. They're going to be the ones who will always be like, I'll cover you, bro. Um, where um, in our mentality, the saw is an incredibly powerful asset. That's something that you have to incorporate into the team if you're going to use it and almost use it like an extended rifle. Um, something that can be very nimble and just as mobile as anyone else in your team using an M4 or any type of weapon system. Um, instead of having that mentality that you're kind of going to be a, uh, a support role or an ancillary role, you have to employ the saw the way you would at your normal rifle um, and be that much more effective. Um, be really in working with the team, pushing contact and using this weapon system to open lanes. Uh, that's really what we feel that this gun is good for. Um, we tend to use the saws in an open environment, uh, a woodland game uh, or a game that there is pretty much no room-to-room uh, -room fighting um, or uh, no urban combat or anything like that. So um, that's where this gun is really a great asset to you and it really shines. Um, as long as you approach the, the environment that you're going to use this gun uh, with a little bit of uh, discretion, this gun could be an incredibly powerful asset and something that we'd like to use more, um, but generally the fields that we play or the games that we enter in, there's a lot of uh, mount or CQB play. So that's when this gun starts to be tend to phase out and be a little bit more of a liability instead of an asset. So um, you just have to think about when you can start using this gun and when it's going to be most beneficial. On the table, uh, you see a lot of the different support weapons or machine guns that we have used in the past. Um, there's a lot of different variants in the market today that you can invest into that would be pretty beneficial to you and your team. Uh, either if they're going to be a, uh, an M4, uh, sorry, M249, M Mark 46 series, um, an M60 E3, Mark 43 series, 240 Bravo, or some of the power saws. Um, there's a lot of different variants, but you got to kind of choose the one that's going to be most beneficial to, to you. Um, for me, I feel the direction that we're going is the one that is going to be most like an M4 and most congruent to the, the type of manual of arms and training that we have drilled into uh, our, our practice with the M4 series is going to probably going to carry over and be the most easy to use for us. Um, so uh, we'll go through all the different guns and show you some of the high points of each one, uh, why we've used them in the past, and maybe some things that you can take away and would be beneficial towards you. So this is one of our uh, 249 uh, Mark 46 type support weapons. Uh, this was a classic army base gun that uh, we bought a bunch of years ago that has gone through just a little bit of evolution and some different upgrades. Um, the main thing that you want to think about when you're setting up a support weapon is uh, the reliability of the entire system. Um, since it only has one magazine that you're going to be using, um, the entire gun is really built upon how well the feeding system is going to work and how well the gun is going to be able to sustain a constant rate of fire. So um, compared with to our PTW weapon system that really doesn't need a lot of internal upgrades, uh, this one is just built for reliability. Um, you know, without going to so deep in specs, pretty much all we've built this gun is to have about 400 feet per second with just the reliability of being able to put a lot of rounds through the gun without worrying about it breaking. I'm um, sure it's going to need some maintenance every once in a while, but the entire gun is just built about reliability. And when you look at it, you look at the accessories that we have on uh, affixed to the gun, it looks very congruent to an M4. 
pretty much the styling, the handling, the type of controls for all the accessories, the optic system. We want it to be as M4-ish as possible because it's what we know. So if you're going to use an ancillary weapon system and then uh, not only does it work different, but it feels different, it would be that much more difficult to use. So we want to keep it as close to an M4 replication as possible while giving the shooter uh, an extended magazine and being able to shoot a lot more rounds. So um, we'll take you through a bunch of different other things that are built on the gun, but you know, as you look at it, we tried to build an enhanced M4 for our 249 system. So when you look at this uh, Mark 46 uh, saw or SPW, um, there are a couple of different things that we did the gun to make it a little bit more comfortable to us and a little bit more conducive to feeling like an M4. Um, we also run the cans on the machine guns. We find it very beneficial uh, because when you're shooting the saw a lot, it draws a lot of attention towards you. So when you put the suppressor on it, um, you can actually you know, reduce the signature of the gun a little bit. Uh, this is the GP Tech SPW flash hider. That's the uh, one that's, that accepts the regular M4 can that we use on our regular PTWs. So same equipment that, that you can use on your rifle, we can also use on the saw as well. Um, we also like to run the uh, infrared weapons uh, light on the saw. Generally we don't run a white light on the gun because this is an open ground gun. It's for woodland and open terrain. Um, this is not a gun because airsoft has changed a little bit. Um, you can't fire full auto indoors anymore and uh, the saw is an outdoor gun. So generally we don't like the white light because we find that when we're running around in the woods or we're going to play at night, white light is not something that you're going to be using a lot. More importantly, if you're going to use uh, a lighting system, you're going to probably use IR as, you know, when you get a little bit more advanced and you have the IR capability, um, it's much more low signature to use. So I found myself using the white light less and less. Um, and I use the IR uh, a lot, where, especially on the saw and the weapon system that's set up for this support by fire and, you know, putting out a lot of rounds, the IR is incredibly powerful and it's something that we usually have on the guns all the time. Um, also, like to run a red dot. It's very easy to put a lot of fire out through this gun and putting some reflexive fire through the red dot, making the gun uh, easier to aim and you know really spot targets quickly. Um, if we use it on the rifle, there's no reason why we use, wouldn't use it on this system. Also, you see that we definitely, um, we don't like to run bipods on the support weapons uh, because what does the bipod really mean in a lot of people's mentality? It's uh, you're in place, you're, you're a fixed position, you're holding down that one position, putting rounds out, where in our mentality, this is an offensive weapon system, not a defensive weapon system. So um, we'd like to take the bipods off to kind of break that mind barrier that you're gonna be in one place. This gun is built for mobility. You're gonna be in the team just as comfortably and just as mobile as you would using your M4. We also like to run the uh, collapsible stock. On the, uh, on the gun. The power stock is nice, but it only has two positions, the uh, either out or in. And I find that the in position is too short and it's a, it's a weird uh, cheek weld and out is just too long. So generally I find that when we put this power stock on, it's incredibly comfortable. It feels just like an M4, shouldering it, uh, using the high ready technique and uh, Feeling the gun on your shoulder, again, it's, it's just very comfortable. Um, we also like to run the Classic Army Box Mag. This is a great system that we've kind of enhanced the reliability of a little bit. This is where the battery for the system is held. Um, we did another enhancement. Uh, instead of loading the gun through this side feature that you have to open up and dump the BBs in, the problem with that was uh, that's where the, the battery is also held and the gun can foul up if you get some BBs in the bottom feeding mechanism. So what we did, when you load the battery in, we have a piece of foam that covers up all the feed internals. And on the opposite side, we cut a little feed door. So when you're gonna dump the BBs in, 
we made this little side feed tray piece of kydex mm -hmm. and some velcro that you can just dump the bb's in to its own sealed compartment so there's no bb's getting down into the feed tray and causing it to misfeed it's uh something that i wish that i had done years ago um would have saved me a lot of hassle and uh, a lot of problems but this is something that maybe you want to do to your saw that will just make it so much more headache free so uh, you can just load the ammo right in there super super fast and close the door and then you're good to go so uh, this one that we're showing right now this is a mark 43 mod 1 uh, or enhanced m60 e4 uh, this is a gun that i used to run maybe uh, eight to ten years ago um, that was something that i found incredibly powerful when playing on an open field. Uh, back, you know, when Airsoft was a lot of woods-based gaming or um, a lot of open terrain, the saw was an incredibly powerful tool because it allowed you to put a lot of fire on different positions, move quickly, and if you employed it the way you would employ a nimble rifle that you didn't have to reload as often, it allowed you to move up and, you know, move and cover guys in the team that were, you know, you wouldn't be able to do with an M4 because you just wouldn't be able to put out that much fire. Uh, so this one is something that I used to use uh, exactly in this configuration, this exact gun. Um, some nice things about this M60 was, uh, this was a custom gun that has, uh, this started as a top M60 that had a bellows system that was incredibly low power and unreliable. This one actually has a mill PPC aluminum 249 gearbox that was fitted to fit inside their receiver uh, a custom you know p90 hop up one of a kind i don't want to get that deep into it but it's a, it's a one of a kind gun that was custom built before they had the vsc guns or any of the new type of m60s that had their own proprietary gearboxes um, this one had a uh we put the rail system on front to make it that much more m4 like and you could put the ir uh, laser systems on there and the bird grip I left the bipod on this particular model because the M60, when you have to reload it, um, it has a side mounted gearbox that is on the left side of the receiver. Um, so when you need to reload it, it was not the kind of gun that you could kind of sit in your lap or hold up with one hand. You actually had to almost put it on the ground. Uh, this box mag was nice because it holds almost 4,000 BBs in the box mag, and I used to put the battery in there too. Um, so it was kind of offset to the left side, there was a lot of weight to the gun. Um, so that's kind of one of the drawbacks of this system. It was definitely set up for a right-handed shooter. Um, you really couldn't transition the gun and shoot off your left shoulder. With the saw, you definitely can. I, I find myself, even a couple times when I use a saw lately, I can definitely transition the gun, shoot off my left shoulder if I need to. With the M60, kind of difficult. Also, um, a lot of our high ready techniques and the uh, muzzle up, I find that we're thinking about it now, came from this gun. Uh, because when the box mag is fitted to the side of this receiver, uh, you almost cannot comfortably keep this gun at the low ready. Uh, because the box mag is protruding so far off the receiver that it almost is jamming you in the gut that you actually have to keep the weapon up high and almost have the box mag protruding almost to your elbow. And that's why you have to carry it that way. So in, in retrospect, that's why I became very comfortable keeping the muzzle up and developing our high ready technique. I found it was almost easier to carry the gun um, with a single point sling. Just getting used to carrying the weight of the weapon all the time, always patrolling and snapping down and you know just burning targets that way. So a little fun fact for you there. But as you see, you know, we try to set it up as congruent as the M4 as possible. And I use this like an M4. I was incredibly aggressive, always being in the front, pushing contact, trying to create new direction for the team instead of being back, trying to be in a cover position. And that's the way that you really want to have a mentality of using a gun like this. Um, you have to be just as important to your team as you would using your M4. Um, you should run the gun. The gun should not run you. The gun should not dictate your play style. You should be the player that you always are. And the weapon system should only be a benefit to you. It shouldn't dictate how you play. So the M60 is a great piece of equipment if you employ it correctly. All right, so this is the 240 Bravo. Uh, this is a big ass fucking gun. 
So you have to keep that in mind. This one is kind of something that we've only used a couple times. Some guys have, are in the crew have tried to rock this in woodland, and um, it's almost too big of a weapon system. Uh, when you're rolling through brush or um, when you're trying to move from position to position, this gun is really designed for something that's going to be in place support by fire. Um, where we've employed this in the past successfully is a vehicle mounted uh, machine gun. We used this one time when we made uh, the death wagon that uh, we had this in a pindle mount in a 360 turret. Dope. And uh, we put the can on it. It's kind of awesome because uh, these old Surefire cans will actually accept the Emerui uh, tracer unit. So um, we like to use a tracer unit on the saws a lot, especially when we're rolling with guys who are not uh, not capable or they don't have MBGs. So um, pretty much we get you know a lot of our guys online or would set up an ambush and um, we just tell the other guys when you see the saws fire, fire in the direction of all the saws. That's where the targets are at. So we use almost like a marking weapon system where they just put a bunch of tracer fire on the intended targets and all the guys who didn't have MVGs and couldn't see the targets, they just shoot in the direction where the saws were shooting. So um, it's a nice asset to have and um, it's a really cool gun. It's a you know big box mag again, kind of the M60 style where it sits off the side of the gun that um, the, the 241 is very reliable. The, the box mag that this one has is uh, just really nice. We never had a problem with that. Just the gun was too big. Um, if you were gonna rock this gun, I've seen some other people polar star it or uh, you know put a BB system in it. It's kind of cool, but um, for us, just too big. It, it's not enough like an M4. Um, it just didn't have a bird grip. The distance between the uh, rear grip and the front grip was almost too big. It's kind of the thing that you're like, I want to lay down, put the bipod out, and shoot this gun. So uh, for us, it just is something that we kind of phased out. It's almost like a novelty item at this point. But um, cool if, you, if you're into it, you really like it. You can make it work, but um, you're definitely not going to be as nimble as you would with her, like a um, Mark 46. Uh, you know, or a saw, or you know, a smaller M60, something like that. Cool gun in its own right, though. So some people ask us what type of uh, gear setup that we would run when using the uh, machine gun. Um, it's my view that you should maintain the same gear setup that you would run with your M4 system because it's what you know, and consistency breeds efficiency. So pretty much, you should employ this gun the way you would a rifle. So set up your gear the way that you would a rifle. The only thing you need to support this weapon system is bags of BBs and a couple of different batteries. So um, I like to run the same vest that I would run when using my M4, just carry a little bit more ammo and have some batteries. So um, just when you're employing this system, don't change your mentality. Try to keep it the same the way you would when running your M4 system because you should treat this like an M4. And play like you're using like your M4 because you have to maintain the same techniques and the same principles that you have when using your primary weapon system as you would your support weapon system. So uh, we like to run the same helmet, uh, not capable because you have the IR system built onto the gun. Same vest because it's what you know. So uh, you know, just treat this gun not like a secondary or ancillary weapon system. Treat it like your primary weapon system. Employ it like such. Play aggressively. But um, this gun will just allow you to shoot more rounds and not reload as often. It's a great tool. Um, so pretty much I would say this weapon system needs to be kind of approached with a certain type of perspective. Um, since the game has changed a lot, uh, there's a lot more mount environment games, a lot of more CQB games. The saw for us is something, it's a tool that you are going to want to employ purely in a woodland game or in an open environment game. Um, a lot of people ask us why we don't use saws as much. The only problem that I found that the saw is a type of gun that is not applicable in every environment. For us, uh, we need all the guys to be capable, interchangeable, uh, almost like a really nice, you know, a very unique puzzle piece that can fit into different molds. Uh, when you have a certain weapon system that you can't use indoors, uh, since you can't fire full auto, um, and then you can't clear rooms with this gun, you need everyone on the team to be a cohesive part. And when you start throwing in a variable weapon system, it messes up the flow. Uh, because then you're going to be that guy in the stack that's like, oh, I'm the saw gunner. I can't clear this room, so I have to pull out my pistol. It just, for us, it's just too many variables. So that's why we like to have everyone running an M4 system. But 
if we're going to be entering a game where we know it's only wood, woodland or an open environment system, this gun is great and we like to employ it. I wish we could employ it more, but you really just have to make the decision for yourself and know what kind of game you're getting yourself into. So um, that's just the kind of perspective that you have to think about when using this gun. Um, but it's an incredibly powerful asset, something that you should employ if you have the understanding and you, you have the, the, the type of opportunity to use. So, um, you know, just take everything that we're saying with a little bit of grain of salt from experience um, that, you know, it can be a great asset to you. You just have to know when to use it and when not to use it. All right, so in summary, when you're gonna be approaching a weapon system like the machine gun, you really want to keep in mind that the person who should be using this weapon system treat it like an M4, the way that you would be using your primary weapon system, just as mobile, just as working all the techniques that you would usually use when you're using your M4 with the team. Uh, be super supportive of movements, but be on the trigger as aggressively as possible. That's why you have the extended magazine. You should be shooting much more than you would with your M4 just because you have the sustained rate of fire and the ammo capacity. So um, really employ it like a rifle with the mobility, but the mentality, mentality Dude, of the extended box mag. Um, the, if you're using a gun that is built an, up enough that it has the reliability and the, uh, the, the consistency factor, shoot it. You know, that's what you're there for. Really put out a lot of rounds to create those lanes for your team to move through. Um, you know, if, if at any time you feel that you're being slowed down or uh, you're in the mentality of being in one position, giving support by fire, you're kind of doing your team and the weapon system a disservice. Become a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more uh, open-minded what this weapon system can do for you. And um, build your gear around the same way that you would normally, so it's the same setup that you feel most comfortable with. Um, if you find yourself changing up loadouts and you know really kind of get in the realism factor, you're kind of getting a little bit lost in uh, really the, per the perceived perspective of what this gun can really do. You know, just kind of break out of that a little bit, think for yourself and find what weapon system can really work for you. Don't be the one guy that I'm the saw gunner on the team. Have saws in the team, give them different people. Um, and see what kind of results that you can yield from them by having different people have an enhanced weapon system. Um, you know, it, you know, it's kind of like throwing a nice kind of, uh, you know, a, a, a different perspective that allows someone else to see the game a little bit differently. And that's when you get some different ideas and you'll really feel out what is, you know, the most beneficial for the team and who can be most effective in different positions. And, uh, you know, kind of have fun with it. It's, it's a great gun, something that can, you know, be very different uh, the experience than you're used to so um, you know just approach it with a certain mentality a little bit of a discipline approach airsoft like a discipline because it is a discipline and um, you know you can get some really nice results out of these guns you should look for opportunities to use this gun but know when not to use this gun um, and we find that generally a lot of the games that we've found ourselves entering into it's not the right time but when we do it's an incredibly powerful system that we do like to employ. Woodland games, open environment games. And when I say open environment, that's not a, a, like a mount game um, going from woodland to an urban environment. Because then when you get to the urban environment, you have to clear rooms, you're almost, you just negated yourself. What are you gonna be doing, clear rooms with a pistol? No, then you're going into an offensive position with a defensive weapon. This is an offensive weapon, purely offensive. So know when the right environment to use this gun is and when not to.